proceeding, we pray that uh, um, hands laid and the examples, the illustrations, will be a means of helping us to better care for, for ourselves and keep our immune system strong. Thank you for the physicians um, here on the island. Thank you for your love, and may your name be glorified today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So let's go right into our quiz. Number one, we are dealing um, with hydrotherapy, which is our, our topic. Number one, hydrotherapy is the use of water as a solid, liquid, or steam internally or externally in the treatment of disease or trauma. True or false? That is true. Number two, hydrotherapy has no harmful side effects. No resistance to antibiotics, provides the therapeutic benefit of touch, improves microcirculation, and improves mobility of white blood cells. True or false? That is true. Number three, exercise, hydrotherapy. Deep breathing exercises and eating a whole plant food diet can Im increase the circulation of blood in the body. True or false? That is true. Number four, hot water constricts or closes blood vessels while cold water dilates or opens blood vessels. True or false? False, the reverse is true. Okay, I know you picked that up. Uh, hot water actually opens while cold water constricts blood vessels. Number five, a cool water temperature is from 70 degrees to 80 degrees Fahrenheit, while hot water temperature is above 103 degrees Fahrenheit. True or false? Above, above 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Above, it's false because anything, it has to be above, anything above 100 degrees. Okay, so it's false. Number six, hydrotherapy can increase white blood cell activity by 200 to 300%, red blood count by 20 to 30%, and hemoglobin by 10%. True or false? That's false. Initially, it runs true, and then at the end, 10% should be 5%. All right? Number seven, the artificial fever range for addressing colds, influenza, sore throats, and pain anywhere in the body is from 100 to 103 degrees Fahrenheit. Is that true or false? That is true. Yes, I had to write that in too. <laughs> it was accidentally left out. Number eight, an excellent hydrotherapy treatment that will relieve congestive headache, congestive headache, one expression, and chest and pelvic congestion is the hot arm bath. True or false? It's the hot foot bath. Foot, okay. Number nine, the water temperature in a hot foot bath should start at 102 degrees and gradually increase to 110 degrees. Is that true or false? That is true. Number 10, always avoid resting after hydrotherapy treatment. True or false? False. Always rest. It is a good thing to rest after hydrotherapy treatment. Number 11, bronchitis, pneumonia, influenza, constipation, abdominal pain, gas, bloating, muscle tension, and insomnia can be relieved using hot fermentations. True or false? That is true. Number 12, a short cold bath will increase muscle work capacity, tone up the skin, increase metabolic rate, thyroid function levels of hemoglobin, red blood cells and white blood cells. True or false? That is true. Typically long and true. Number 13, 
The cold shower is one of the most powerful of all tonics. True or false? That is true. Number 14, hyper or hypothyroid. Hyper means high fun um, overly functioning. Hypo means under functioning. Hyper or hypothyroid, nervousness, exhaustion, depression, sluggish circulation, general weakness, lack of en endurance, anemia, alcoholism, drug withdrawals, and insomnia can be relieved using the cold mitten friction, true or false? That is true. Number 15, the contrast bath speeds up the healing of infections, sprains, strains, swellings, trauma, after the first 24 hours, and fractures, that's the trauma after the first 24 hours. After, if 24 hours expires, then you need further help. Fractures, reducing pain and edema, is that true or false? That is true. Number 16, winding down, coughing, nasal con congestion, throat congestion, dry throat and throat inflammation, cannot be relieved through steam inhalation. True or false? That is false because it can, positively. Number 17, painful joints or bursitis, painful muscles, acute neck and lower back pain can be relieved using an ice massage. Is that true or false? True. Number 18, for someone with a fever of 99 degrees Fahrenheit, to 103 degrees Fahrenheit, you want to create a higher artificial fever. Is that true or false? Yes, that is true. Some people might think, well, that's a fever already. But it can go, um, the fever created should be between 102 degrees Fahrenheit to 104 degrees Fahrenheit. So you saw that? Number 19, a hot and cold con contrast shower could be used at the first sign of a cold. Is that true or false? Very true. How many people got all correct? Wonderful. How many people got all but one correct? Okay, that always happens. All right, without any further ado, we have online people waiting as well. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, I'd like to um, present my husband, Dr. Leonard Gibbons. By the way, somebody asked, who is that speaking? I'm Dr. Rosamond Williams Gibbons, and introducing my husband, who is also a hydrotherapist, studied hydrotherapy. Um, he is a preventive care doctor, and um, without any further ado, we want to introduce the best in the field. We also have accompanying him, um, Mrs. Joan Robinson, who also studied um, hydrotherapy and has um, presented to teachers and, and around the island. Um, God bless us all here today, everybody re represented. Enjoy and may God's name be glorified as a result. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. How are you? Okay, let's go to the slides at this time, please. Okay, what have we here? All right. Okay, today we're going to talk about what we call what? Hydro. Hydro means water and therapy means treatment, right? So we're going to talk about the use of water in the treatment of disease. Water is one of the most powerful of remedies that uh, almost nobody utilizes. Uh, however, uh, most of us get experience somewhat of it when we get a bath. Uh, but we're going to look at water and how we can use it to radically improve. Now, is water very expensive? Yeah, most of us have a tank, right? And so we've got tons of water. And it's like our God to do what? To take the things that are easily accessible, yet uh, they have the properties that can make us truly healthy. All right, so um, the use of water in three forms. Water can be used as a what? As a solid, as a liquid, and, or as a steam. Uh, all of those three forms can be utilized to benefit health. 
and we're going to demonstrate how to use those three forms this morning. Why use it? Hmm. Uh, we're sort of missing a little bit on the bottom there. Um, can we just move that? Um, just need to move the table over this way. Are you comfortable with that? All right. All right. Now, water is inexpensive. It's very accessible, no side effects if you use it appropriately, and it requires simple equipment. Um, it has the right properties to function as a therapeutic agent. Uh, most of us are composed of what? Water, right? So the fact that water is everywhere, if we can uh, apply hot and cool, it actually can radically change the volume and the circulation of blood in the system. So this is a very powerful. I would, I would say it's even more powerful than, than some drugs. You can change the volume of blood in a minute if you know what you're doing. Uh, it can do some amazing things. All right. It works with your physiology, right? How your body works. Um, drugs don't necessarily work with your physiology. Uh, for example, you may uh, put something under the tongue. It's called nitroglycerin. It's going to dilate or open up the blood vessels in your, you know, the purpose is if you're having pain and you're walking, and so it helps to increase circulation. But nitroglycerin not only increases circulation here, it increases circulation where? Everywhere, right? So you can end up with a headache because it's dilating blood vessels everywhere. But we can specifically influence the blood vessels where? Right here, and not the ones here. So we don't end up with a headache. You follow me? So this is... Uh, one of the reasons. Uh, you can focus on an area without compromising the health of other parts of the body, which we uh, just alluded to. No harmful side effects, no resistance to antibiotics, right? Uh, we live in a day where antibiotics are overused. Over 80% of the antibiotics used today are used in animal husbandry, right? Uh, used in factory farms, right, to make animals grow, grow quicker and also to help to deal with the contamination of closely confined living. And when we overuse antibiotics, these antibiotics, uh, um, the bacteria becomes, uh, are very intelligent and they could uh, circumvent and create ways so that drugs can't work anymore. And there are a number of, of drugs that before used to work, but now they don't work because of the overuse of uh, antibiotics, okay? But we can use the body's own immune system to work for us. Does that make sense? Wonderful. All right. So, uh, therapeutic benefit of touch. Coming close to people, you know, with personal touch is uh, very important in healing. And in many instances, what did Jesus do? He came to people and he what? He laid his hands on them, right? And when we come close to people, it has a way of endearing them and... Uh, opening them up, you know, and they experience this, this touch, and some people just don't have it. You follow what I'm saying? You, one thing about this type of a treatment, you're always in contact with people. You know, an average treatment could go for about 60 minutes, right? And you're there with that person. Now, back in the day, before we had penicillin and all these drugs, this is what we used in the, in the centers that actually did really... Uh, good uh, treatments. So uh, when the antibiotics and all of that came on the scene, they just, you know, swooped all the hydrotherapy aside. Hydrotherapy requires more time, and it's quite easier to just what? Give you a pill and send you on your way so the next person comes in, right? Not very personal, but hydrotherapy is personal, right? You come in, you have a headache or, or whatever else, and we run through a treatment, 60 minutes, right, versus a pill. But at the end of that treatment, what, what do we have? Your immune system is engaged, right? You feel better. People sleep better. You know, your whole body feels alive. Uh, and so I could go on, but that's what it's talking about. So it improves the mobility of white blood cells. So your white blood cells respond to the contrast, the hot and cool, 
your body reckons that uh, something's going, you know, this is extreme, right? And so it mounts a what? Protective mechanism, and that's how your body works. You know, you fold on, you break a leg, right? Or what have you, all your immune cells, what? Come out of the woodwork and go to fight for you. I, you put you in a shower and I, do I dump a bucket of cool water on your head? You're gonna shout at the beginning, right? Ah, or what have you, right? But what is your immune system going to do? It's going to come alive, right? All the white blood cells are going to come out, you know, your nerves. Everything's going to be vitalized, right, to fight. And so we manipulate the immune system so that it can fight in cases of an infection. So a water therapy could be like the equivalent of you walking five miles. You follow what I'm saying? In terms of trying to get your immune system up and circulation going, we do that for you by applying hot and cool, all right? So this is, this is amazing. Uh, the chemical attraction of white blood cells, and the white blood cells follow chemicals, right? You get damage, chemicals are released, and then that signals the white blood cells, this, come, come, this is the place. And then they come marching in, right? All this chemical attraction is all going on, right? Same idea with this vaccine, right? And if this foreign thing comes into the system, and what does the body do? Hey, what is this? Let's, you follow me? So the body is all about healing itself. Phagocytosis and destruction of germs. Phagocytosis is gobbling up, right? It gobbles it up, and then it inserts toxins in it. While it's in the cell, then that dies, and then this cell, what? This dies too. You ever had an infection in this pus or you know, white stuff and comes out and all of that, right? Well, that's the dead white blood cells after they've done all the work to clean up. You follow what I'm saying? Getting all of that out of there. So that's all part of that process there. Okay, so those are the benefits. Natural means bring about supernatural results. Uh, I included this at an earlier uh, um, lecture, but it's important. Natural means... Uh, means used in accordance with God's will brings about what? Supernatural what? Results. And I, I want you to get this because I truly believe that God works when we commit the treatment or whatever to Him and ask Him for wisdom, you know? And in lifestyle centers, you know, we, we pray to pray with people, you know? Of course, we first ask, do you mind if we pray with you? And then we pray, Lord, I ask for your guidance, right? I ask for your angels to direct what I do so that it will be a what? A benefit for this person. And when we cooperate, uh, the angels will speak to us. Not that we hear them audibly, but they will say, do this, do that, don't do this, right? And I, I've been in those circumstances where you just, this is voice saying, you know, okay, do this. Don't be so regimented as to say everything must happen a certain way. Open your, uh, your eyes and say, Lord, I need you to direct me today. I trust you. I don't trust myself. So help me in this process. And when we in humility come before the throne of God, we have working with us and through us mighty agencies, including the angels themselves that work with us. And I don't know about you, but that's an uh, amazing um, idea or belief. And if you're going door to door, no matter what, the angels will be a part of that process if you invite them. So, so we ask for a remedy, and the Lord directs the mind to a what? Simple, right? Remedy. Simple things bringing about what? Amazing supernatural transformations. All right. There are many ways of practicing healing art, but only one way that heaven approves. You've heard this. Right? God's methods or remedies are the simple agencies of nature, and we're talking about water, one of those simple agencies today. All right. In order to have good health, we must have good blood, right? So if you, you want to go have good blood, you've got to have what? Good? Okay. But let's talk about what makes blood good. Is circ the circulation? Well, it does in hands, but what you want is... You want the healthy food so that the blood that you're circulating is what? Healthy blood. You don't want to circ circulate sick blood. You want the best blood. So you want to eat the best food, and then you want that food to what? Circulate efficiently. And then you want the body to get rid of toxins 
efficiently, right? So we're taking on nutrition uh, and oxygen and circulation, right? And speeding up the healing process, right? So we need proper food. We need to cleanse and, uh, uh, elements with cleanse and vitalize by contact with pure air. So you need pure air and, and carries life-giving vigor to repart, da, 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 the perfect circulation, the better the work. Perfect health requires what? Now, if, if there's anything you want to latch on to, the principle today is per perfect health depends upon perfect circulation. Now, if that is true, that if I am unhealthy, right, then somehow, somewhere along the line, something's happened to my what? Circulation. You follow me? I got a headache, I got pain, I got all sorts of different things. Um, Think what? Circulation. Congestion, lack of circulation, right? So, no matter what somebody is dealing with, we want to enhance what? Circulation. So, circulation is enhanced by many, many means. So, our whole purpose is to look at how we can ha enhance circulation. All right, so that is the important principle. All right, so. What improves circulation? Of course, we talked about this exercise. We talked about that, all right? We, and today we're talking about hydrotherapy. Uh, deep breathing increases circulation. Uh, whole plant food diet uh, versus a high fat diet. Are you with me? So all of these enhance circulation. So um, you're looking at someone, you know, you're, you're talking, you know, man, I, I, I'm not feeling well. Okay, so something's wrong with their circulation, right? The question is, what is it? What's causing the circulatory problem that's related to whatever they're doing, right? Now, if you ain't got good circulation to your brain, then you end up feeling what? You know, your brain's foggy, right? You follow what I'm saying? In fact, you can be irritable, you can be frustrated, you can be mad, and you have poor circulation to your, to your brain, right? So... All right, so your, your heart, circulation, everywhere. So it all has something to do with that, right? So what impairs circulation? Chill body parts, right? Uh, I, I saw this person a couple of days ago. They had all these heavy things on. It was cool, and the legs were totally bare. So what is that telling you? Where is the blood going? The blood vessels are constricting in there, and, and so all this congestion is in the chest. And this is one of the reasons women have a lot of issues is because the blood is congested because they're dressing, right, to, to, you know, everybody else. You follow what I'm saying? The extremities are cold all the time, right? So what they need to do is what? Cover up, right? And then because of that congestion, congestion, you got pain, right? Right? You know, and you got circulatory issues. You got me? You got cramps, right? All we're looking at is what? Poor circulation, congestion. The solution is to create perfect health. So we look at their exercise. We look at their water. Water internally also, in addition to water externally. Deep breathing exercise. And, you know, I, I shared something about uh, uh, sometimes uh, cramping can be related, it can be relieved by doing deep breathing exercises for 15 minutes, you know, twice a day. We're talking about enhancing what? Circulation. If we look at physiology, we understand how physiology, we know what to do. Are you with me? How can I help this person's what? Circulation, right? Our chill body parts, constricted clothing, you know, well, of course, if your clothing is so constricted, what are they going to do? They're going to hamper circulation of blood and all of that, right? Irregular eating habits, high-fat diets, the like. So all of those are factors associated with uh, poor impaired circulation. All right, of course, the blood transport system, your cells, plasma, dissolved materials, oxygen, energy, waste removal, your immune system, all of that, right, happens through our what? Circulation. So if we enhance the circulation, we add oxygen, waste removal, immune system. So we're looking at uh, 65,000 miles 
of vessels or blood vessels in your body that are influenced when you apply water. Can you imagine that? All right? So we're talking about some amazing properties in the skin. I mean, it's got all sorts of things. It's the largest organ of the body. It cleanses, detoxifies, it protects, is involved with homeostasis or balance, right? All of that is the, the skin. It's the largest organ of the body, right? The, when you're moving, uh, where does all the toxins go? Out into the what? In the air, out into your pores, right? So you're relieving the congestion from your organs internally, and if you can't move, we'll move it for you by applying hot and cold water. Are you with me? Okay. Uh, absorption. Things absorb through the skin, and we talked about that. You put herbal preparation. You smell something now? Hmm, do you know what it is? Anybody? What oil? Lavender, right? Lavender is good for headaches, right? Right? Lavender is good for, for pain. Lavender is relaxing, right? Helps you sleep, right? Okay? All right. I mean, this is a plant. God gave us, right? But it has these healing properties to it. Ah, your immune, immunity is in, in the skin, right? So, all right. Now, okay, water has many different temperatures. It's very hot. 104 and above, right? Uh, as you can see, all the way down to cool, and then very cool is 32 to what? 55. Now, it's important that you, you know what you're working with because certain temperatures work good for what? One thing, and other temperatures work good for something else. Uh, neutral will do what? Give me an example. What do you think a neutral temperature will do? Just top of your head. What is it going to do? If the temperature is neutral, it should have what? An exciting effect or a depressing effect? Or neither? It has a relaxing, calming effect. Okay? Agitated people need neutral, right? Are you with me? You're thinking about, you know, different things of how they affect the body, right? Now, very hot can help with pain, and very cool could also help with pain, right? But it depends on what we're, what we're working with. All right. Okay, hot water dilates blood vessels. And what does the word dilate mean? It opens up, right? And what does cool do? Cool constricts. So cool closes things up. Hot what? Open things up, right? So if you've got congestion in your chest, and I put a hot, moist pack on here, what's it, what it's going to do? Everything under that pack is going to what? It's going to open up. So if I have congestion and, and, uh, and pain, right, and I apply heat, moist heat, it opens up all those what? Blood vessels in that area. And what do the white blood cells do when we apply heat? They come alive. Okay? So the white blood cells come right, and all of that. And then if I put cold behind that, then what's going to happen? It's going to close, it's going to push it away. So, so just imagine you're washing clothes, right? And so this washing action is what? Helping to loosen up, right? So the cold, the heat opens up, expands, brings in fresh blood and oxygen and white blood cells and cold constricts it and cleans up the area, right? And you bring it in again and this is washing action in and out, in and out. In fact, contrast, hot and cold is even more intensifying, right? And those white blood cells start coming, man, and they start cleaning up, you know, and you feel like a million dollars, right? You feel, man, oh, you will fall asleep, man. People come agitated, and in 60 minutes, they're going to sleep. Just water. No pills, no herbs, no drugs. No acupuncture, just water. Powerful. All right, so this is giving you a little background. Now, hot foot bath is one of the most uh, amazing, and we're going to have someone to uh, our, okay, 
So uh, my wife, Rosamond, is going to be the person who is actually uh, engaged in getting a hot foot bath. Now, hot foot bath is one of the easiest, uh, safest uh, treatments that most anybody can do. Okay? And um, let me talk about the physiology of it. Now, you see this picture here, a little boy, you know, he's got a, he's got a sheet and a what? Blanket, and there is a bucket in front of him. Now, let me talk a little bit about that, so just focus on me. Um, all right, so what's the purpose of a hot foot bath? All right. It provides general warming of the body. Now, sometimes we apply what is called a cold treatment, the, a hot treatment, or a, let's say a cold treatment. Uh, you never apply a cold treatment with somebody who's already cool, right? So anytime you're going to apply a treatment uh, that is a cold treatment, you want to make sure the person is already what? Warm already. They must be hot. Uh, so whenever we do cold, real cold treatment, we want to make sure the person is first what? Hot. Somebody's cool, and you apply cool, what's going to happen? Yes? Their actual body temperature. You know, they're, they're cool, they're chilled. You're not going to put an ice, <laughs> ice pack on someone who's freezing, right? You want to make sure that they are warm first, or it's not going to help them. Yes? Okay. Uh, the comment was, when I have a temperature, I, f I start chill. So what's going on there? Well, the body is actually ramping up its temperature. So you feel this chill, and, and it's actually a mechanism taking place to drive your temperature up. And that's what's happening in that case. Now, we may be an assist that. You're, you're, you're chilling and you're warm. We'll warm you up farther. We'll, and we'll get that reaction going quicker. You follow? Now, what we tend to think is, yeah, yeah, we'll do that. You know, we'll, so we'll warm you up. We'll be, and get your temperature kicked in. You follow what I'm saying? So your body's trying to kick in because of an infection. That's why you feel that chilly. And, and in an hour or so, what's going to happen? You're going to feel hot, right? So it, it starts out like that, or your head's going to feel. But actually, your temperature is rising as a result of that there. Okay, so it provides general warming. It increases white blood cell activity, stimulates circulation, relieves what? Congestion. Remember, perfect health depends upon perfect circulation. So imperfect health is because of... Congestion, so how do I relieve what? Congestion. Relaxation, okay? Um, you're over nervous, tense, and all that. When you apply hydrotherapy, it helps a, helps a relaxing effect. Inflammation of the feet, lower blood pressure. So, headaches, chest congestion, pelvic congestion, nose bleeds, insomnia, or preparation for cold treatment. So, you got a headache. You have congestion here, you have congestion here, you put your feet in hot water, right? It has what we call a reflexive effect, right? So applying heat relieves congestion in these three areas. Follow me? So if you've got congestion and pain or what have you, you apply, put your feet in hot water, reflexively it releases. You know, so if it's a headache, you follow me? chest congestion, or all of those things there. All right, so those are the indications. Okay, contraindications, cautions, diabetes, um, poor circulation, lack of feeling. So if you don't feel something, then what? You won't know, right? And you could end up what? burning someone, so to make sure we know that they have that feeling. Uh, never increase their temperature above 103 for someone who's diabe diabetic, but if they have really have poor circulation, then do not what? Do not apply hot, 
hot. Okay? Okay? Are you, are you with me? Circulation is poor. No pain, no feeling. They're, they're clueless. I feel great, but they're being what? Burnt because of the heat. All right? So there's impaired circulation in the legs and feet. Um, circulation disturbances, edema, Burgess disease. So there's a number of things. So what do we need? A bucket, basin, face towel, pitcher, hot water, ice, blanket, sheet, thermometer, chair or bed. Okay? So you, met, you bus, got to get all your equipment together. And uh, here we here, we have something right over here. Uh, Sister Robinson. How are you, Sister Robinson? Okay, Sister Robinson is a trooper. Uh, she uh, um, graduated from Wildwood, Wildwood Sanitarium and, and Sanitarium, right? It used to be Lifestyle a hospital, center. Lifestyle Center. And, and so she's worked with tons of people. And uh, today we're going to have um, Rosamond. So what you're going to need to do. So let me, before we, let me walk through a couple of things. But as you can see right here, she is sitting and ready. And typically, you know, you wouldn't have a ton of clothes on, right? Okay, um, but we're going to do this today in this fashion, okay? So, just imagine she has a headache or she has chest congestion, uh, you know, all, all of that. Even if you're not sleeping that well, you can use this, right? Because perfect health depends upon perfect what? Circulation. So, we've got congestion all up here. We want to relieve congestion and move some of that blood to your extremities, which can hold a lot of blood. Are you with me? You can hold more, but you don't have enough blood to cover all your blood vessels at the same time. That's why if you ate and you ran out and ran, your digestion would stop. The blood would go from your digestive system to your limbs, okay? So you don't have enough blood to be everywhere. So what we're going to do is relieve and bring the blood down. All right, let's see what our slide says. Okay, so that's everything we need. Now, there is an artery on the top of your feet between your two, your, your big toe and your next toe, right? And it runs all the way up. So there is a little, now you can practice this on your, your own. It's, it, this is not the easiest pulse to find, but you know, this is what you're doing and then you just call it there, but you're doing that right on the top of the foot, right? Now, uh, you know, if you don't know, if you have clueless, you know, that's a way of just attesting if, if someone has a, has a pulse. You don't have a pulse. You're not going to be using any what? Um, contrast and all of that because now nine times out of ten, most people will be fine, right? In some institution or you have no clue this person has, you know, you're, just, be, just be on the careful, careful side, okay? Um, all right, so let's... Let's go for it. Let's, okay, history of diabetes and blood vessel disease, you want to be careful. Check for sensation, you can check for pulse. Sensation, if, if I touch and then I use a feather, you feel it, right? You don't feel anything, right? You don't apply anything. Are you with me? All right, so that's that. All right, next procedure. Well, it's a whole bunch of things. They can be lying down, they can be sitting down. So she's sitting down, right? Sister, place, uh, place your feet under the tub, uh, put their arm in. What do we got? Do we have uh, water? Uh, okay, so what we're going to do, hmm? okay, um, okay, so what we're going to do, uh, first of all, we're going to add, add water to the, to the tub. And uh, we have both some cool and uh, hot water, right? Now, um, remember your um, handout we talked about where you start the temperature at? Remember that? Like a, about 102 or there or four, you can, you can go from there. But, um, okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to put hot water in there. Um, we have some extra hot water, right? Mm. Okay. Uh, we're we're going to... Yeah, we need some more. Um, 
let's just go with what we, we've got. We, we can add some, um, add some more um, um, cold water to that. Okay, so we want to make sure that the water is not too hot, right? Now, there are two ways of doing that. Of course, you have the, um, you want to uh, wind up your, your sh pull that up, sorry. Okay, so the person, the, the chair is draped with a sheet, and we also usually have a blanket sometimes under that, but uh, we, okay. So um, basically, we, um, you can drape the, the chair with a blanket and then drape it with a towel. That's one way, okay? Because what you're doing is you're going to create a, sort of like a cocoon, right? And all of it's going to be closed in around the person as their feet are in the hot tub. So um, the first thing we do is we put the, um, their feet in our hands and then your hands are going into the water. Wait up, Rob. You're, um, so you're guiding. So the first thing that touches the water is, is your hands. So if anybody gets burnt, it is you, not the patient. All right? Or the person. So you always do that. Now. Okay, this is under 100. So this water is not super hot, right? It's not hot. Um, so we got some more heat? Okay. And of course, what you do is you explain what you're going to do, right? So you basically say, well, this is a hot foot bath, and it helps to relieve congestion, right? It helps with insomnia and et cetera, okay? All right, so um, would you... Um, How's that? Is that too hot? How's that? Is that okay? Too hot? It's good? Okay. Tolerable. Uh, Wayne, would you give me a little bit more cool? Uh, what you do on the side, you have uh, your cooler water, and you also have additional what? Hot water because uh, but every two to three minutes, it's going to start what? Cooling. Cooling down. So after about three or four minutes, you're going to add more hot. And you, you just keep adding. So you want to keep the temperature at, a, at the level that they can what? They can bear, right? If they're diabetic, you want to keep it at what? No more than 103. But other people, you can, no problems with circulation. You go to tolerance, right? That's too hot. So you move their, their feet to the side, and then to the other side, you add what? You add the cold water, and then you treat, you know. How was that? Good? Very hot? Okay. All right, let's um, wrap you up. Okay. It's very important to keep the uh, sheet right over the uh, tub because you want to keep all the heat in it. All right. Wonderful. Okay, so uh, all of this will help to what? Keep the heat in. Start to raise the temperature slightly. It's not going to be the very intense high temperature that you would reach on another type of treatment. And therefore, it's much safer. They're not like, likely to faint or feel very, you know, compromised. 
And so your, um, what we did at our, you know, after a few minutes, then they start to press fire or you can wrap a um, cold turbine on there. And this is, right. Just relax, Rosemary. Let her, let her do, the, do the thing. <laughs> so this has been put in a what? In a basin that has ice and water. So what we do is we have our ice and water. Do we have our? OK. All right. This is, um, well, we're not going to do this very intense, this one here. But we would have the ice, and we would have it in a basin with hot water. And we'll have this here would be wrung out, and then we wrap that around the head. OK? So whenever you have hot treatment, you want to keep the head cool. All right? You with me? Yes. Or oh, they can get a headache. You know, it would feel very uncomfortable. Uh, but ice when you're getting a cold treatment is the best thing in the world. And I'm telling you, when you're really getting a hot treatment and they put cool, uh, you, feel, you feel great. All right? Now, if you're cool, you don't feel great when you have cold applied. But if you're really hot, you feel, you feel relieved. Okay, so um, how are you feeling? Okay, feeling great. Now, this, this whole treatment can go for 20, 10 to 20 minutes, 30 minutes, okay? And so every few minutes, you're going to be what? Adding more hot water. Um, sure, you change that there. Um, doesn't tend to get too intense, so it's not like uh, another treatment I'm going to share where it is super, super intense, okay? So you have your basin with your um, cloth for keeping the head cool. Um, you have your cattle for adding additional hot water, OK? And after about you know three minutes or so, we add some more. We got more. How's the water feeling? Hot. Hot? Um, can you put it in something that I can pour it easily? Uh, like a pitcher? Uh, another pitcher. Oh, oh, so she said there's as much heat as she can tolerate. No, 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 I said a little more. A little more. Okay. But basically, two minutes, two to three minutes, I'm checking. So how is it? And just keep adding. Okay? All right. Any questions on, on basically hot foot bath? So you've got congestive headache. You got chest congestion, you got pelvic congestion, you're putting your feet in hot water. Even people are just not feeling themselves, right? I, I just don't, you know. A simple treatment is this. Uh, you follow me? So everything you need is basically in most people's house, right? A bucket, you know, sheets, towels, those sorts of things. All right? Uh, we have a question. Where's. Question. Um, I actually, that's what I wanted to ask. Like, do you, as the person that's going to treat the individual, take all of that with you, or are you telling the person ahead of time to see if they have all of the necessity stuff? Um, um, I understand what you're saying. So. Um, it's probably good that you have uh, stuff yourself, you know, uh, you know, some basic things, and create your own home remedy kit where you have, you know, basin, you have a water thermometer, you have a mouth thermometer, you have mittens and, and all those sorts of things. But most people would have towels and, you know, a big sheet or what have you. Mr. Robinson, what are your thoughts? Good morning. I have actually gone to someone's house and done the next treatment on them, along with the hot foot bath, 
And I just inquired, um, you know, I had a conversation with them as to what they had, what I had. So then I knew what to take there. So you don't have to lug all of your stuff, but um, sure. basically I, they, they didn't have anything. And I just showed up at their house. I lugged all that all the way from Tennessee. Okay. Um, one, Lee, you were talking about the pelvic area. If any of you have granddaughters, nieces, or whoever, and that time of the month comes around, and even some of us, the, some married ladies still get it. It's too much blood congestion around the uh, uterus, and therefore, this is one of the most excellent treatments for it. In about five minutes, they don't have pain anymore. And I know this because I've treated several people like that. And so you don't have to have all these blankets and all of that. Use what you have in your home, but get the feet, get the treatment started. Right. I mean, basically, you know, their feet are in the hot water, and that's going to what? Equalize what? Circulation, right? Congestion is creating the issue, so put the feet in hot water. If all you got is a bucket, just put it in the hot water, and it will relieve congestion. Yes? Good morning, everyone. Um, so my question is, so can you add anything in the hot water, like maybe some essential oil, or is just straight water? Uh, sure. If you want to, uh, you know, add other pieces to it, if you want to intensify the heat, you could, you could put uh, dried mustard in there, right? You can put cayenne. You can put essential oils so that they are breathing in the essential oils. If they're having problems sleeping or what have you, put a few drops of that in there. Now you're getting, you know, you're getting the, you know, the aroma and the healing properties of that in addition to the water treatment, right? So you're getting two treatments at the same time. You're praying for them, right? And if you can sing, you know, uh, you know, whatever it takes to what? Create the environment for healing, right? And if people feel comfortable, and feel that you are out to help them, right? They will get better. Most of the therapeutic effect has to do with the belief of the patient and the healthcare provider. But we're going to talk about that next week when we talk about mental, mental, spiritual. Uh, you know, getting the you know the head up. Belief, faith, faith. The power of faith in healing. Uh, yes, uh, Dr. Gibbons. One last question. What, what effect does the, does the uh, dry mustard have? It intensifies the heat. Okay. Thank so you. if you want to intensify the heat, heat, more heat, then you put things that can intensify that, that heat. Okay? And so there are, there are herbs that, that do that. Um, so, yeah. All right. Lee mentioned using anything that you had. I treated someone who was a member of this church in a bucket that had been used for cement and whitewash and whatever. But we washed it out and used it, and in a matter of minutes, her migraine headaches had stopped. All right, and in addition to the hot foot bath, you can put what? Cold to the head, right? If there's, there's headaches, but a cold compress to the head while the foot is in hot water and that will help with uh, a lot of headaches and things like that. Yes. Dr. Gibbons, um, you hear people talk about putting Epsom salt in water for the bath. What does that do? Or is that something that you can do? Is that for It pain? may help with the relaxation. Um, it's got magnesium in it, right? And magnesium has a calming effect. And uh, how any of you remember the class we were talking about herbal preparations using a bath and how many minutes you need to be submerged before things start absorbing through the skin. 15 minutes. Oh, somebody remembers. So remember, what you put in the water can also what? Go absorbed. So we're thinking what? Multiple things, right? We're thinking of things that will enhance the water intensity on the side plus putting something in the bath that will enhance also 
essential oil or circulation and all these things. And, and this is amazing stuff, right? People with migraines and headaches, you know, going on forever. You follow what I'm saying? Taking pain, kills, feeling horrible. And just imagine you're, you're into someone's home or place and you put your feet in a hot bath and in 15 minutes or less, they're perfectly normal. How do you think they're going to feel about you? Hmm? You have won a what? A friend for life. This little girl, who was a member of this church, would never talk to me. And her, I'll say her name, it was Damien Ray's wife. She came out of church, her eyes were bulging, and I rushed her home. And her little girl, from that day on, has been a great friend. Her and I are great friends, because I told her, we're going to get mommy well. And when she saw her mommy stop crying, and then she was well. Her and I were buddies. Every Sabbath she came to church and she was hugging me. Amen. And we, and we still connect. Amen. That's a powerful object lesson, right? Uh, and, and that's what Christ did. He came close to the people and they were dramatically improved and they were open to the gospel. And that's what we do. We come. And the good news about sickness is it's a perfect avenue to reach them with the gospel. So what Satan uses to destroy people, God uses to reach them. So there are a lot of people that are sick. All sorts of issues. You give them a foot bath, and they're feeling great. Now you have a friend, someone who is open to what? Hear what you have to say, and that's the power of it. Okay, so we're not going to prolong this a lot longer. And so when we've done our treatment, we need to finish it off, right? And what we do when we finish it off is we use cold. All right, so you, you've opened the pores up, so you bring the feet up and then you pour the coal over it and then you dry it briskly, right? And get them to rest, you know. Uh, the more intense, the more rest people tend to need, right? And uh, 30 minutes, maybe a good, good rest period. How's that water? Water cool down? All right, so the water has cooled down. Ordinarily, you know, after about three minutes, my, my goal is to what? Keep it hot, right? So, and so when I'm pouring more hot water, I'm pushing the feet to one side, right? I'm pouring water, and I'm saying, uh, let me know when it's enough. You follow me? And I keep adding until they say, stop enough. Then I pull this back down again. And this is the process we do. Unless, of course, we know they're diabetic. We keep it at what temperature? No higher than 103. Are you with me? All right. Then we finish off, right? Bring it up. All right. This is ice curl, and we have our towel. Yes. Yes. Up, bring your feet up a little. Make it a bit. Can you? A bigger towel would be. That's okay. All right, let me just put that there. All right. All right. Can you bring it up a little? Bit? All right. Okay. You have a maybe a, like a towel on the floor. You don't want to put their feet on a cold floor. All right. And you want the room to be warm, right? Not a cool room. All right. All right. How was that? Yeah. You can put your your socks on. Now, ordinarily, we're going to, we're going to, my, our goal is to make it as intense and in this case as we can. Of course, it all depends on what's our purpose, right? They have a headache, a terrible headache. I'm going to intensify that heat and I'm going to put that what? That ice cold to the head to the start. You follow me? If it has nothing to do with the head, 
then I'm not necessarily, like a headache, I'm not going to just apply cool to the hair right away. You follow me? I'm going to wait for what? Little beads, you know, and then I would apply it if it's congestion somewhere else, if it's your chest, etc. All right, thank you so much. All right, so this is something that any of you can do. And my suggestion is you go home and you practice this this week. Uh, get someone in your family, a friend, you know, take the notes and go through the whole process. And get them to ask you how did you feel, right, after it, right? And most people will, will say, man, I feel better. I feel, um, I feel relaxed. I feel calm, I feel invigorated. You follow what I'm saying? The pain is gone, et cetera. So that's what you're looking at doing. Um, so that can go on, you know, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. If it's pain or something, you, you want to go, go a little farther. Yes? Oh, let's try that. Let's do that. Now, there is a, another treatment that's a little bit more intense than that one. But what we do is we create a tent, okay? And now we're going to put a uh, kettle underneath that's going to be steaming up. And so this plastic tent that gr wraps around them now keeps it in. So you're sort of like creating your own what? Steam bath, right? So instead of going to the spa and spending, you know, <sighs> Who knows, a hundred or more dollars, right? You can create this whole thing and you can portably take that with you anywhere you go. And then you can put in there what? You can put essential oils in there, right? So it's heating them up. Uh, of course, they're not gonna be, you know, have all the clothes on like that, but you need to be very quick with what you're doing, right? And, um, okay. No. Yeah, so we will put the stove down below. And the, the modern ones where it has the um, cable, I mean the cable, you know, the extension cord. You plug it in there, and you're turning it on, and it's facing where? It's facing the back of the chair, right? And you have a wooden chair, not a metal chair, right? Okay, it's a steam and heat. You don't want metal, your wood would be better. So. This, as you can see, it has a place for the hole. This comes down. All right, so they're all closed. Their feet could be in the hot water. So they sit first, make sure the feet are comfortable. And then we put a towel around here, right, because we don't want the steam coming up and burning you, right? So the towel wraps right around you to protect you. You're all tied in. Now this is would probably be more, more intense than just the what? Foot bath, okay? And this will equalize the circulation or create congestion. It will equalize the circulation, right? It's gonna bring the blood to the what? To the surface, right? So increase perspiration, increase detoxification, enhance sleep, everything positive you can think of. I'm not quite feeling myself. This will work, right? It's not always some, you know, you've got some serious issue that you need to rush to the doctor for. You follow what I'm saying? You know, sometimes we just need to equalize circulation. We haven't been walking. We've been sitting most of the day. You know, we're in an office setting. We're not getting out. So what, what we're having is poor what? Circulation. And so we want to enhance the circulation and people can feel great like in 10 minutes. All right, so you've got the cool to the head, right? And you've got this uh, neck thing here. Now we can also have on the side a little um, a cup. Uh, you can put hot water to intensify, if you drink hot water, you tend to be hotter, or you can put in there like uh, mint, right? Uh, that can help intensify the reaction, all right? Now, when you start press prying, you're losing what? You're losing water, so you're replacing water by what? Do you, 
drinking, okay? So we're getting here more water. Oh, I'm thirsty. You know, give me water. You follow me? Keeping the hair cool, keeping them nice and, nice and hot. But you're always talking to them. How are you feeling? Are you okay? You know, um, da, 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 da. Always be in touch. Do not, um, move. Do not leave the room treating a patient. Make sure you have everything right there. And you always have ice and a bucket. Uh, uh, I remember one experience when I was at Yuchi Pines. Um, we were in the treatment area, and this uh, lifestyle counselor who we were called was given a treatment. And they rushed out to me, right? I said, you know, you know what's going on? You know, and, and the person was like, they, they faked it out, right? They put him in what we call a steam cabinet. Uh, we didn't have anyone here, and, and I showed a picture of it, right? It opens up. And they took him out too soon, right? They got him to stand up too soon. They should, at the end, they should have just opened it up and let him relax and drink water. And so they were like, they're fainting out. So they had a basin, right, with ice and water. So I took it, and what? What did I do with it? And whoo, they came right back. Right? Whoo, they were, they, were, they were back. So what had happened, essentially, right, they, they, they lost that, that blood supply to the head, and they fainted out, right? That's why you keep the hair cool. You always keep cool, right? Just pour that coat on. That'll bring them right back, okay? So always have that beside you. Yes, Sister Robinson. Yes, some of your, your treatments, it's very important that you have the second person there because you cannot attend to everything. You know, you're watching the person, and it's just... Some you can do by yourself, but when the treatments become more intense, it's always good to have your second person there working with you. Okay. Now, ord ordinarily, what we really need to do is to have um, an option where you guys can actually do it in practice. And, of course, because of COVID and all of this here, you know, hopefully this will so end soon. Um, I'm not going to tell you my thoughts, real thoughts, but hoping that that time comes soon, sooner rather than later, so we can get people proficient at doing hydrotherapy. It's not complicated. It just involves certain steps, and if you follow those steps, things will be perfectly fine, okay? Just yes. to confirm, the water that you, if the person um, needs some water, is it warm water or is it cold water? Can they have it's either? not usually cold water. Uh, we may room temperature. It could be room temperature or it could be even hotter if we're trying to intensify the reaction. Thank you. But yeah, it's not, not never ice cold, right? So are we saying that we should not uh, treat ourselves if, we're by ourse if we are by ourselves? Certain treatments you can. Uh, contrast showers and stuff. You go in the bath, you take a shower. Shh, 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 shh. You, can, you can do those things. Um, hot foot bath, you, probably, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not the most intense sort of thing, you know. Uh, but it's always good to have, have some support with you. I mean, I'll give myself a hot foot bath. That's not, a, you know, if I'm sitting and I put my feet in hot water, you know, uh, you're there for a few minutes. I mean, if you sit in a tub for 30 minutes, 40 minutes, you know, you're getting a bath. Uh, what's the issue if you're sitting in a chair and just your feet are in a hot tub? You follow what I'm saying? You know, but always good to have, have someone, else, especially if you're in a tub and you're, no, you don't give yourself a, a artificial fever treatment. No, you I don't raise your temperature by yourself. That you don't want to do, no. But you can sit at a little, you know, something like that. Yes. Yes, I have a um, foot bath machine. Is, would that be good to use instead of a bucket or the basin? Uh, depends on how deep it is. The deeper it's, it, it is, is it's, it's good if it's... Yeah, d d depending on the size of it, because remember, every two to three minutes, you're going to be adding more hot water. So if it's a little small thing, you follow me? It's, it's not going to work. You follow me? Uh, bigger, bigger bucket, you can keep adding, or you, then you have to pour out and add more. No, you just want a bigger bucket so that you can keep adding to keep it hot. Okay, so that's the important thing about 
the, the hot foot bath. Okay, all right, so we can, um, uh, are we going to do that? She's ready to go to sleep. And that, that's just a little, all right. Okay, let's, let's get back to, uh, bring me back up. Uh, let's take a look at the next slide, please. Okay. As I was saying, you can use dry mustard or uh, one teaspoon per gallon of water. I think I put that in your handout so you know how much, what's the proportion to intensify the reaction. Um, so the next is hot fermentation. Uh, the application of moist hot towels or fermentation pads. It increases white blood cell activity to two to three hundred percent. Now, is that significant? Yes, yeah. two to three hundred percent. Now, they're all sort of in a in an environment where they're just sort of resting, right? If you don't, if they don't need to work, what do they do? They lay back, right? When you apply heat, they come out. They come out. It's like a fire alarm. It's set off. And they come out, you know, they uh, two to three hundred percent increase. Um, just a minute. Um, okay, mobility of white blood cells increases red blood cells twenty to thirty percent. Hemoglobin, you know, five percent just by applying applying water relieves internal congestion, shifting the blood to the skin, assists the body in removing waste by increasing sweating, and of course it increases the body temperature. That's some of physiology. Okay, now this is an example. You see this picture? Uh, this is a very quick and um, not as intense, but just imagine there, there's hot water in there, right? They've wrung this out, they put it in, right? They've wrung it, they're holding on to the dry portion but the rest is hot, moist. You follow me? Now, if it's not intense, that could be even applied directly to the, to the body, right? Uh, what we're doing is intense, so you put layers of what? Towel, dry towels, and then you apply the what? The hot on top of that. You have extra towels, so that if they say it's too hot, then you put in another layer of what? Dry. And the, the goal is, they feel it, it's intense, but it's not burning them. You do not want to burn the patient. It's better that you're on the side of caution than, you know, go too far. Okay. All right. What's my time like? Five minutes to ten. Don't look like we're going to get too far today. But... Let's see what we've got here. Okay, now there are three ways. Okay, but we're going to do one. Oh, go for it. All right, so what we have here maybe it's from is a hot fermentation. Um, do we have a... How are you? Yeah, maybe we can do up one. You got... Uh, I want to show you what a, what a, a real hot fermentation looks like, what we use in uh, treatment centers. And um, you see that? That's hot, right? But that's therapeutic, right? So we wrap it, right? And we roll it up. And it's ready to go. Just, I don't know. If you want to feel it, you can. You can pass it around. So, let's look at the one we're doing. What did I do with my... Yes. I did. I don't know what I did with my um, clicker. Do, do, do. 
No, I was going to bring my thing. What did I do with my clicker? Okay, what did I do with my clicker? Oh, here it is. All right, so we're going to speed up a little bit. Can uh, I just ask a question? Yes. Um, I went to Wildwood, we went to Wildwood, and I, I did the same thing, they did the same thing on me. I was healthy and you name it, right? And um, I got burnt. It was, uh, when I tell you my, my entire bottom was black. Oh. From the, it was not hot, it was just right temperature, but I, my bottom was black. Mm. When I, and it was the first time that um, I wasn't allergic to anything at all. The right. first time that the doctor said that if she's ever seen something like that. So what I'm saying is that we have to be so careful um, of the medical. Uh, the I didn't know that I had yeah. any problems at all. But it, it went away. It's like you have a, a burn. And that's what took place. And this was just on, on um, um, warm. The towel was mm -hmm. warm. They do exactly the same thing as well. So okay. we have to be just be very careful sure. of the temperature. Okay. All right. Um, all right, let me just go through a little bit of that. Um, what we're looking at and what I'm going to do is, uh, of course, it's for a number of issues, uh, relieve pain, uh, nerve pain, back pain, joint pain, arthritis. Um, if you look at your, um, reduce congestion, chest congestion, constipation, abdominal pain, bloating, bloating. Um, make sure the room is, is warm, which we talked about before. Um, consider the age, vitality of the patient. Uh, individuals that are older cannot tolerate a lot of heat, and young can tolerate these extremes. Average, middle-aged, young person, they can tolerate more heat. Uh, it's always good to start with a more gentle, right, and work up rather than very intense, just to get some sense of how they respond. So it could be a very mild thing. You follow me? First one's very mild, not super hot, not super cool. And then you build from there. Tolerance builds over time so people can, can do better. Okay, next slide. Okay, so this is what, we, what I've done, what I've used a lot in Yuji Pine. It's sort of, well, I look at it as, as a, a treatment that can address a multitude of ills, okay? So if you look at the picture, there is a hot pack on the back, okay? So this is what this is, okay? So this is the fermentation. This is covered with a wool um, sheet right there, and then towel on top of this, right? And then the person will lay on this here. And when they're comfortable, then we go to the next thing, right? We could put the what? Hot foot tub. They're comfortable with that. Then we're going to do what? The next thing is we're going to put a what? A comp, one fermentation on the chest. So it's on the back, it's on the chest, the feet is in hot water. So we're doing multiple treatments at the what? You're getting a hot foot tab, you're getting a hot fermentation. And then you're putting what to the head? Then the cool, and then you put a what? Blanket over that, right? So now you got, this is a, a really intense uh, super treatment, right? For pain and a lot of issues, and you, this is not something you could do by yourself. Someone has to actually go through this whole process. Question. Yes. Doctor, are they fully dressed when you put them on the table? Mm, no. Okay. No, they're not fully dressed. <laughs> Minimum. You know, maybe, you know, like, that's it, yeah? You follow what I'm saying? Right? All burning prom prominences and sensitive areas need extra what? Extra padding, right? Extra towel, because they're more likely to what? To burn. So those are the areas that you want to make sure that are well covered. Question is being asked, what do you have? 
you don't wear a sports bra, okay? So it's minimum, I'll give you that, and I think you all can comprehend that, okay? Because we want to get the full intents. Margaret's question, um, I have seen that maybe not to the extent, but sometimes when people ask the question, are you comfortable, are you all right, are you feeling any burning, steam will burn you quicker than water. So if it's the slightest bit of discomfort, let the person know, okay? Because it just could be the fine edge of a fermentation that will burn you, okay? And we do not, ladies do not treat gentlemen, and gentlemen do not treat ladies. So we can do that with old ladies one time and show you an actual full treatment. Okay, all right, so um, we're gonna just do a very, mm -hmm. all right. Kind of, I think it's, okay. Yeah, we'll just, we'll just let him to lay briefly so we can sort of see what it looks like. Um, do you wanna move those so that we can get the hot foot do we have that? We don't have that? Okay. So we're just going to uh, just do a dry sort of dry run here. So, okay, Ryan. Okay, Cobb. <laughs> All right. So uh, you got your shoes on? Just take your shoes off. Now, obviously, he's not going to have all these clothes on in, in reality. So we first had this fermentation. We put that on there. This towel is Oh, it's quad, quadrupled, right? Yeah. Okay. And okay, so I want you to lie on your back, and your head right here. Okay. All right, so uh, we set this probably, yeah, the whole line thing to the back. I don't know if you, if, you, if you need to go that farther, fine. If not, you could adjust it. So then you ask, so how are you feeling? How's, how's it? Is it warm? Is it? It's barely warm, right? So if it's barely warm, then it's actually what? Not the, not the thing, right? So, so in that case, we would, we would we need less. You follow what I'm saying? I mean, I feel this, and it's, it's warm. It's lightly warm. It's not, it's not hot, not hot enough, okay? So you have separate layers, additional layers, so um, you can add a layer. Right? So they, they sit up and then you put another layer going back. You follow me? But you want that perfect balance where it's intense, but it's not what? It's not burning you, right? Okay, we got that. Okay. So that's there. The second thing we're going to know, stay there. The second thing we would do is bend your knees, Ryan. Okay, we have our hot foot top. We put them in there, right? Now that's in there. How is it? Is that hot enough for you? We pour more, right? So now the back is straight, the feet are straight. Now the next part is the what? Is the chest, right? And then I apply for that and do the same thing. And what do we put? We put dry towel first. You don't put no moist, no, 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 all right? Okay. Now this one will probably be a little, little, can we put one up? Oh, don't worry about it then. We're good. You want to do one? Yeah, why not? Okay, this is not that hot, right? If, if I took it out of my, I, I could not do this if, if it's super hot, right? All right? All right, you feel that? A little bit, okay? And then we cover this, right? Because you want to lock the heat in, right? And we tend to use like wool, which has a hood. All right. So um, this is there, and this is there, and then we have our blanket. Where's our blanket? And then this. Right. This is like that picture, right? Picture that starts off in our thing. Yeah. All right. Now, this is a, what we call a revulsive fermentation. So it's hot, then every four minutes, we're going to what? We're gonna change it. 
we usually do three exchanges, okay? So after three minutes, we're gonna pull this back, right? We're gonna take this off, right? Curl mittens, mittens? Okay. All right, then we have these good old mittens, right? This is called curl mitten friction. Curl mittens, and they are sewn together um, washcloths. All right, got a little arm on there. And, oh, okay. Okay, Ryan, we're gonna actually do the curl mitten friction on you, okay? A little bit, let's see, can we? Nah, I don't think we can do it. We're gonna, can you br bring, uh, bring that down? Right down. Okay, so we take this. All right, so you put this, put these on. Okay, now put your, your hand on, on my shoulder. All right. We flip it, flip it around the other side. And you dry it, right? Now, that's that. Okay, how's that feel? Feel stimulating? So, what we do is we do that on the chest, right? And then we to put another application of heat. Then after another three minutes, we do another cool. And then we do another three. So we do three, then we finish with curl. So we've done that. Then we do the extremities. We do this arm, we do this arm, we do this leg, we do this leg, right? We do the back. And then they rest for 30 minutes. We pour curl on the, on the, on the feet. Take that out. Right? Make sure that the bed and everything is dry, right? You don't want them resting on a, on a damp or wet thing. And let them rest 30 minutes or longer. And you've done that treatment. Uh, I know at UT Pines we did a, we each did a treatment a day, you know. Uh, but some people may require more depending on what they're dealing with, right? They've got intense pain or what have you. They may require a treatment three times a day. Right, so that's on the hydrotherapy part. So we demonstrated a little bit of um, curl mitten friction, which is a powerful remedy if you take a look. Now this is something you can do, right? Really, of course you can't do it on yourself that well, right? But it'll wake you up. It has an amazing tonic effect. It'll help you sleep also. It helps to equalize the circulation, helps with a uh, whole bunch of things, yes? And also underneath um, the back of Ryan's neck, we would have a, a plastic bag maybe with ice under here. And um, we're checking him all the time to you know, see how he's doing. Um, it's a kind of a question coming about treating the ladies. Trust me, ladies, when we remove the pads from your chest, it's done very discreetly that even the person who's doing the treatment do, does not view the person that they're treating. It can be done discreetly. I'll have to show it to you, okay? Okay, wonderful. What time are we, nine? Oh, my, my, uh, my watch has the wrong time. <laughs> okay, it's almost quarter past 10, right? All right, so this is uh, pretty involved, pretty, um, yeah, but it is amazing and it's a fact. And um, 60 minutes later, when you leave, you are definitely changed and transformed. All right, so our goal is to work towards um, making that happen, even here at Southampton Seventh-day Adventist Church, uh, perhaps a, yes. Uh, they do not do hydrotherapy. The only thing we have at the office where I work, 
hydrotherapically is the infrared sauna. And so you can go into the infrared sauna. It can raise your temperature about two degrees. It's a walk-in sauna. Um, three persons maximum can go in it. Uh, it has a number of settings from, from in, uh, inflammation to weight loss, et cetera, and um, pain management and all of that. So you basically sit in there. You know, you drink water before you go in and uh, it heats you internally, not like the surfers. Finnish saunas, you know, you're pouring water on rocks, tends to be more stuffy and intense. But the infrared is like what you get from the sun, right? It's a cold day, and you go outside, and then the sun breaks through, and you feel that warmth. That's the infrared, and the infrared help with immunity, speeding up healing, all sorts of things. So that's the only hydrotherapeutic treatment we have at, at uh, uh, Bermuda Wellness and Outreach Center. Um, basic bathtub. No, we have a, what is called a, um, uh, anti-gravity treadmill that you are locked in, you zipped in. It does, it creates, uh, it, it's like you're swimming. It elevates you, so you have less um, work um, on your joints and all of that because it blows up. It's like you're in a bubble, but it's a treadmill at the same time. So people who have joint issues and things like that, uh, it helps to relieve that there. Uh, maybe we could, uh, uh, if you want to, at one time, we could uh, have a group, we can go down and see what we do there. Yeah, if you wanna, wanna do that. Um, you can see all the sauna and, and all that sort of thing. Um, it's very reasonable, the sauna, and I'll just say this, you know. Um, yeah, um, we have a membership for a gym, it's about 60, 60 plus a month, but then you can use the sauna as much as you want. Right? That's pretty uh, reasonable. Uh, when one treatment could be $50, uh, you can have uh, four times a week. For three, three weeks, four weeks, you can go into that sauna. You follow what I'm saying? And it's only 60 bucks. And that would be more, far better than most of the drugs that people are taking every day. All right? Because it's going to equalize circulation. It's going to create these amazing benefits. Okay, Mr. Ryan, you can, um, thank you so much. Uh, look forward to the time where we can actually do this for real and get you guys really, for good students who are really serious about it. And um, just encouraging you to um, uh, apply some of those things we were talking about. Now, uh, we don't have much time, but I guess we could do an ice massage. Very simple. Ice, ice can help with what? with pain. Do we have a, can I see one of these? So we talked about fermentation, number six. Let me um, see what somebody's number six. Thank you. Let's go. Page 14. Um, anybody who wants to try this, uh, just put your hand up and we'll give you a frozen, okay, this is ice and it's in this foam cup. Um, painful joints, page 14, do you see your page 14? Painful muscles, acute neck, low back pain, you can use a foam cup or a paper cup. Of course, caution if people, people are already cold and, and, and uh, we see uh, rheumatoid arthritis, any condition where the ice intensifies a painful condition. So if they have a painful condition that is intensified by ice, you don't use what? Ice. Does that make sense? If you're, yeah, okay. All right, so there are bony prominences 
and you do not want to what? Linger there. Are you with me? Okay, that's not a good plan. All right, if you look at this, okay, tear back the cup from the top to expose about an inch of the, of the ice. Okay? So... All right, so we got our ice. So there are four stages, right? Uh, you see one cold, uncomfortable sensation. So that's what happens first. So what you're going to do is just do some rotating um, on your arm. Are you with me? Okay, the second stage is burning. Okay, so it's going to go from cold to burning. Aching for short and then numbness. Okay, so those are the stages we're going through. And the whole idea is to numb the what? Numb the pain. Okay, and that could take a good 10 minutes. So we're going to go from that comfortable pain, numbness, all the way through to, okay, and when it's numb, it's actually the pain, how does the pain go away, and sometimes you've got serious pain, nothing's working, get your eyes, roll it externally, all right, feels good for the first start. You just keep going. You don't stop. I ah, aches and till it gets to the point of numbness, and that's if you've got serious pain that you're trying to trying to help of the body uh, deal with. Okay, so that's that's. That's not complicated, is it? No? Very simple. All right, I think we're coming to the end. Let's take a look at a couple of more slides before we, before we end. Um, Co-mitting friction, what I was doing with my son, Ryan, Increases white blood cell activity and antibodies production. Antibodies, what do they do? They uh, uh, create this environment. If something comes back, the antibody kn knows how to what? Attack it. So the body creates a uh, preventive. Builds uh, resistance to curls, reduces fevers, stimulates neuromuscular turn, uh, controls blood vessel diameter, keeps the flow of blood, goes to thin and circulation. Of course, the room needs to be warm. The person needs to be warm or ready. You don't use it on a cold person. It's a, it's a fantastic um, tonic, right? You go and buy these tonic. I don't feel, you know, I, do I need a vitamin? You know, no. You need a contrast or, <laughs> or cold mint friction. That'll wake you up. That'll get your blood moving, right? The problem is poor what? Circulation. So let's enhance the circulation. Yes. Oh, mm, do we have? Okay, uh, Sister Robinson, talk just a little bit about this. Of course. Oh, okay. Um, we can take a look at it. This is another treatment we didn't get to do. This is a very simple one. Um, say a little bit about it, Sister. Robinson in a two-minute little thing, and uh, we'd use, use Wayne. Okay. If you feel you're getting a sore throat, you know, a little scratchy throat, um, you don't have to take a whole lot of stuff. It's, it's just a piece of our um, little pillowcase or whatever you have, and then you can either freeze this if you're brave enough. You wet it and freeze it, and then you immediately take it out and wrap it around your throat and then you cover it with a wool um, scarf or whatever you have. But I'm just gonna do, or you can use it dry. You don't have to use a coat. So I'll just do it quickly. All 
All right, so just imagine that is ice curl. <laughs> Good vein. <laughs> And then you wrap the warm around it and make sure there's no, no air, make sure that the wet doesn't uh, link out, so it's perfectly covered with this. Uh, so initially it's cold, right? And the blood vessels do what? They constrict, and then what does the body do? The body wants to work against that what? Cool, so it brings heat, and then it warms up. And when it warms up, it brings with it what? fresh blood and white blood cells to speed up healing in that area. This is a very simple thing that uh, anybody could do. Uh, there's no real danger to that at all. You're not going to faint out with this, this thing here, okay? All right, so that's, that's uh, heating, heating compress. Very simple treatment. So we did the, hmm? Yeah, you can do it anywhere, anywhere on the body, the elbow, uh, the chest. And, you know, you can, like, uh, yeah, put on a T-shirt and then put a, a warm something over that. So this whole area here gets that, that warm, warm circulation. Yeah, wrung out and, and put on. Now, if you don't warm up in a, in a, in a few minutes, then your, your body's not ready for it. You follow what I'm saying? So if you don't warm up, so better that you're warm first. But if you don't warm up quickly, then your body is not really, what, adapting to it. So it's not going to work for you. All right? All right. We've got uh, two minutes left. Curl mid and friction is amazing. Um, hot and curl contrast. This is one of the most powerful treatments that you can apply. apply. So you would have a bucket with ice and water, and then you have a bucket with as hottest waters they can stand. So it's basically 15 to 30 seconds cool, three minutes hot, and then you go back. 30 seconds, three minutes, 30 seconds, three minutes. You got an infection, right? Um, injury, now injury, you fold on, you sprain yourself, you, uh, you ice it for the first 24 hours, and then you contrast hot and cool. Okay, uh, so that's, that's, that's the reason there, you, you, you ice it. And then you may ice it for, you know, five to 10 minutes or what have you. You let the area warm up and you ice it again. You follow me? And if you do that, you will lessen the likelihood that you get this amazing swelling that takes forever to go down. You follow what I'm saying? So the more f up front you ice with an injury, the less the, the healing will speed up quicker. After 24 hours, you can contrast. But if you've got an infection or something like that, you can do contrast right away. You follow what I'm saying? Yes. Uh, we, we, can use, we can use heat, right? Some people don't tolerate cool that well, and some people don't tolerate heat that well. So you test, test the waters. Uh, my, my, you know, my gut, I tend to start with, with, with heat. You follow what I'm saying? Remember, there's more likely congestion. I apply heat, it expands the blood vessels. You follow what I'm saying? And it helps, helps with that, that whole, whole bit. Uh, some contrasts work, but you, you check it out. Uh, take a look at the, um, the, the examples we give you and the conditions and contraindications thereof. All right, we are almost there. Hot and cool. There are various ways of doing it. Um, let's see. You can even gargle, right? Sore throat. You can put you know, a little cayenne or what have you, your hot water and gargle every four hours. You follow what I'm saying? For irritations. Uh, so one, you can put that externally and then you can gargle. You follow what I'm saying? Yes.
sure. Uh, just make sure you don't get the right under the skin. It, uh, you know, the green the part that where the keen, because if you get that, that could cause you to um, your bowels to move rather um, vigorously. <laughs> so you cut, you cut under this, the green part on both sides. Use the elephant ones, the thick ones. Then you got that gel, okay? But watch out for right under the skin. That's that you don't want to get that. All right. Um, so we've talked a little bit about hydrotherapy. We didn't get to a lot of things. There's a contrast shower, 30 seconds cool, you know, a minute hot, you know, and back and forth. And you got the instruction on that as well. And a lot of the benefits. And we talked about the, uh, the heating compress. You can see it's wrapped around the chest, the neck and also the, the, the limb. All right, so this is just a, just a touch of um, what you can do in terms of water treatment. It is a powerful modality. So practice some of those things uh, for this week coming up. Next week, we will be upstairs, okay? Uh, something else is happening downstairs, but we will be upstairs. Uh, and uh, we will be looking at rest uh, temperance and trust in divine power, the element of faith in healing, and how your faith in the, in the treatment and in the person has more to do with healing sometimes than the remedy itself. So we're going to talk about the importance of, of faith and the placebo effect. Now what is placebo? It's supposed to be the fake thing, but more people get well off the placebo sometimes than the, quote, real treatment. What is going on here? <laughs> you know, you're taking something like a water pill and it's g as good or better than the drug. Well, how could that possibly be? Well, looking forward to seeing you next week where we're gonna delve into that there. So, um, hey, uh, happy practicing. And uh, for those of you who are here, um, sure, uh, come and give us, uh, you know, a testimony. This is what I tried and this is how I felt as a result of that. So put some, some application this week. All right, let's close with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for today. Thank you for water and its amazing benefits to heal. And we ask that you would give us wisdom to know how to apply it. And as we apply it, experience the benefit, not only for ourselves, but for others who need uh, these simple natural remedies. Bless us to this end, we pray. Keep us safe until we meet again. Amen.